So I found my first con of the Sony ZV E10 Mark II, and it's not even really the camera itself, it's the editing process. And what I mean by that is, if you're using DaVinci Resolve to edit your videos, and you've always used an 8-bit camera like the Sony ZV E10 Mark I, or maybe the Sony ZV-1 Mark I, or Sony ZV-1F or something like that, whatever 10-bit camera you've been using and you decide to pick up your first 10-bit camera or the capability of 10-bit, and it's the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II in my case, you're gonna run into an issue if you're recording in 10-bit any of the codexes or whatever, the 422 or the 420, whatever it is and stuff like that. At least in my experience, it didn't matter as long as I was in 10-bit, this issue arised. And I'll have a video in the description to tell you how to pretty much caveat and get around you know the uh, potential fix whatever for it using davinci resolve but i want to make people aware of it because a lot of people are going to pick up this camera whether they're upgrading or it's the first camera or whatever and they're going to learn settings from other content creators out there and once they put this camera into 10-bit they're going to realize that they can't render their footage and davinci resolve because it just shows up as audio and no video and I know some people are going to be like, well, duh, you know what I'm saying, out there. But I'm trying to tell you, there are going to be people who run into this issue because, again, they're brand new to 10-bit. Maybe they're coming from 8-bit like I did. My first camera was the Sony Alpha 6100. Then I got the Sony ZV-1 Mark I. Then I got the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. And I've been using those cameras 8-bit, been you know shooting uh as far as recording into the sd card but now for like a year and a half i've been using the hdmi port or wherever on all my cameras going into separate capture cards and recording into obs so i don't have to clap and sync up stuff in post and eq microphones and all that stuff all that stuff is being recorded into obs and i'm good to go smooths out my workflow cuts everything in half and it's just an easier time unless i need to go out and do product b-roll or i need to go outside then if i'm doing product b-roll i use the alpha 6100 with the sigma 16 millimeter lens on it i just use the default footage where from the sensor i think it looks fine for youtube thumbnails and product b-roll because i'm only using little snippets of it but when I go outside, I always use the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. It's 8-bit, but I go into DaVinci Resolve to color grade and EQ my microphones. But outside of that, I'm using Wondershare for more and OBS. And what I noticed with the 10-bit codex, like I said, no matter what codex I was using, as long as it was 10-bit, this issue happened. When I take it into the DaVinci Resolve, it would just display the audio. It would not display any video, period, at all. And when I was doing research trying to figure out what was going on, apparently DaVinci Resolve puts that behind a paywall. So you have to pay for DaVinci Resolve. And if you ever looked at the actual price for DaVinci Resolve, it's pretty dang expensive, in my personal opinion. But a lot of these content creators who cover cameras and stuff, like I keep trying to tell people, when it comes to certain aspects of what they're telling you, it's kind of hard to listen to them if you're smart because a lot of them are getting money from sponsorships or they're getting money from doing weddings, uh, photography, um, you know, documentaries or, you know, advertisements for companies, all that stuff. So they're getting the paid a decent amount of money. So paying for DaVinci Resolve, that one time and done thing or wherever, it was like a drop in a bucket to them. You know, you know what I'm saying? But somebody who paid $1,000 for the camera, this is their first camera. They don't have that much money. Maybe they got it um, as as far as like paying monthly wherever for the camera and stuff they don't have money to drop like that on an editing program you know what i'm saying even if it's a one-time payment so they're gonna run into this issue when they listen to people and they're like oh yeah i can shoot in 10 bit and wherever so what i've found is the easiest solution is if you're in your office in your studio wherever you're going to record a video and you have a desktop pc or laptop whatever and you have the little HDMI to a USB capture card. I've talked about in a tips video on how to stream with, uh, I would say the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II or accessories and stuff like that. I'll leave that playlist at the end of the video so you can find that video there. But just put that HDMI cord into that you know camera, put it into the USB capture card and just record everything in OBS. You can color grade your footage. Again, I have a video on that. You can find that in the playlist, but you can record your videos color graded, EQ'd and everything because OBS allows you to have plugins for your microphones. So you can have it perfectly EQ'd and color graded and you can record your videos or whatever. And you don't have to worry about any SD card and uploading footage and doing all that stuff or whatever. And your resolution in OBS, you can set it to 4K60 or whatever you, whatever settings you want, you can do all that with OBS. I've been doing it successfully for about a year and a half now on my channel. 
and I have had no complaints on the quality of the footage or anything like that. More so, it's just been kind of like the audio. I'm still trying to figure that out. But overall, that's going to be a seamless workflow and it's going to cut your workflow in half. I recommend doing that. But if you still want to record into your SD card, you need to know about this issue. I found an easier way and nine times out of 10 people who probably picked up this camera and their new budget content creator, they found out about an editing program called Wondershare from Mora. And I know a lot of people are going to sigh because if you know anything about the drama with them and people don't like that editing program because it's too basic and entry level, you should be using higher quality programs like Adobe or DaVinci Resolve and all that stuff or wherever. And you should just learn how to use those programs. Listen, it's I've been using it since 2014 as far as on a laptop on a Mac, their version, and then, you know, coming over to Windows and been using it, like I say, for that long, can't teach an old dog new tricks. And it's been working fine for me on this channel obviously you see what i'm saying so there's no reason for me to you know move over and the only reason why i use davinci resolve is because of the color grading i find is a little bit better as far as when you slap a lut onto the footage but even with wondershare for more recently they released histograms and stuff like that so they're kind of moving into more of a professional realm and being a little bit better as far as you know doing your luts and stuff but the main reason is if you do go outside and record a footage or wherever and you want to eq your microphones they don't have a way to put in vsts or plugins to eq your microphone and that's the number one reason why i don't like using them for that process and the only thing that you can really do is a basic equalizer. So it's not even worth, you know, the hassle. It's easier to do that kind of stuff with certain plugins and VSTs or wherever in DaVinci Resolve. Or you, like I said, you could just EQ your microphone using OBS. But like I said, if you go outside and record that footage into your SD card, you're gonna want to obviously EQ your microphone and color grade your footage. And like I said, it's easier to do in DaVinci Resolve. So now what you have to do, at least in my instance or wherever, I'm not following that tutorial guy thing or wherever that he did to you know get the 10 bit footage to render in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just importing it into Divin into Wondershare from Mora and then exporting it immediately depending on how lengthy your videos are that's going to add an extra step if you're already paying for Wondershare for Mora like I am I already use it a lot so I'm getting my money's worth kind of thing but it's going to add that extra step of putting it into Wondershare for Mora rendering the footage taking it into DaVinci Resolve color grading and EQ in the microphone all that stuff and then rendering it in DaVinci Resolve and then bringing it back into one of share for Mora and finishing up the edit I know a lot of people say we'll just edit in DaVinci Resolve but I don't like editing in DaVinci Resolve the tools the layouts everything like that it's very cumbersome for a person to try to learn that and I have stuff I need to get done, whether it's dates for product reviews or my time crunch and stuff like that, as far as the time I'm allowed to do content creation. So I don't have time to sit there and learn how to do all the editing and stuff like that in DaVinci Resolve. It's very uh, overwhelming for a brand new person or wherever, especially when one to share for more is right there. It's very easy to edit the footage and stuff like that. And obviously I'm not shooting stuff that needs a professional editor as DaVinci Resolve. And like I said, it's just only because one to share for more doesn't allow VSTs and plugins because if they did, I would not be using DaVinci Resolve at all because I just find it over cumbersome or wherever it takes too long to render and everything like that, especially since I'm already doing the OBS trick. It's just easier for one to share for more. You know what I'm saying? My footage are already color graded. My microphones are already EQ'd and stuff like that. There's literally no reason for me to use DaVinci Resolve. And the only reason why I did it was because for one, it was free and for two, color grading because of the SD card stuff or wherever. But now if I have to go out or wherever and record a vi video outside or something like that, I'm probably honestly going to stick with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I to do that because I know I'm not gonna have to do this big workaround with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II or whatever to do something about that 10-bit color. Cause like, if I'm gonna use 10-bit and record and stuff like that, I'm gonna use it because I got this camera. You know what I'm saying? I spent that much money on the camera. So why would I use anything less than 10-bit? You, you see what I'm saying? But it's gonna be more of a hassle and a longer workflow for me if I do that when I go outside and vlog and do all that stuff or whatever, unless I have the time to, you know, pop it in the computer let it render and i go do whatever i need to do and then come back later but usually i don't have time for that you see what i'm saying so it just kind of sucks but it's just the truth you know what i mean and 
it is what it is. Like I said, most people, if I guess if they were just already using a program that allowed them to do 10 bit because they purchased it or something like that, and they have the time because you know, that's their main job. But I have a son, a wife at home and stuff like that. I'm not making big bucks off of this. So I don't have the time to sit there and do that stuff. And like I said, I know there's going to be people out there who are going to like dislike the video or say, yeah, duh, wherever, just buy it. Or, you know, why are you using one? Like, I, I understand all that stuff. But again, I want to make this video for that one person that this is going to help out and they need to know this information because like i said other content creators out there they're not going to tell you about this because they're not dealing with this issue because again these camera people man i'm telling you it's so frustrating because they don't tell you from an average consumer point of view because they've already purchased you know davinci resolve you know what i'm saying because they made like a thousand or two thousand dollars or more on a wedding or something like that You're like oh you know that's that's a drop in a bucket you know what i'm saying Pff, it doesn't mean anything i could i can do that that's easy you know what i'm saying or they're making big bucks off of you know doing youtube or they have an editor who's making big bucks because they're paying them and that person bought davinci resolve or whatever the other programs out there that you need to pay for you know what i'm saying and it's like dude i use one to share for more you know what i'm saying like I don't know hopefully this was helpful to somebody if it was or informative to somebody then please leave a like on the video let me know in the comments down below and i'll catch you guys in the next one y'all take care have a squid day god bless you and yours and deuces don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll catch you guys in the next one